everyone welcome back to my channel this is lizzie and i'm here today with day two of our 12 days of christmas craft series hosted by miss rosa kelly from rosa kelly scrapbooking again rosa thank you so much for bringing me along on this fantastic journey along with rosa there's four other of us four other ladies who are joining in on the fun and i'm going to have their channels linked below make sure you guys go ahead and follow them like subscribe and comment because every one of us is going to be having a giveaway and that those are the requirements you must be 18 years of age or older you must be a visible subscriber to all five of our channels and you also must leave a comment and the more comments you leave the more chances you have of winning because we're going to be basing our um, winners based off of the comments that we have on our videos and we can just pick some random video out of all 12 we will pick just one and whoever has comments on that one video is going to have a chance to win our personal giveaway so let me go ahead and get started with my day two project again like I said a lot of my projects this series are going to be something small simple quick to make this holiday season so that way you can go ahead and give out to all of your friends crafty co-workers teachers whatnot something simple and sweet that you can give out but at the same time it has a lot of heart felt into it because it is handmade so uh, without further further ado let me go ahead and show you what i created these are little hand sanitizers little baskets and these are the hand sanitizers from um, bed bath and beyond bed bath and beyond oh my god these are the little hand sanitizers from bath and body works guys it is like past midnight so forgive me for making a few mistakes um yeah these are the hand sanitizers from bath and body works this will fit though the hand sanitizers that you see from dollar tree um they do i've been looking for them but i have not been able to find them they usually have them in a clear little plastic like bag or purse looking thing and there's three of them in there so three for a dollar that is a heck of a deal versus paying a dollar something for one of these but either way depending on what you're trying to do craft fair give out to teachers co-workers or give to family you, it's up to you about how much you're going to spend for this so this would actually fit um the hand sanitizer or maybe even a tiny lotion um i did get this idea again i'm gonna a lot every single one of these um projects i'm going to be giving it to you are my favorites that I have seen other people do. So none of these projects are my original idea. Um, I will try and link the video that I got the idea from down below. Like this is for example, from Tamika from Scrap the World, except I added a little, you know, tag topper on this with a little bit of a ribbon um, and hers was just plain, just square. So, and I also did cover and mat the entire thing and she only matted the front and the, this front and this front. So either way. So I thought this was super, super cute. You can easily put this in a little clear plastic bag, like from Hobby Lobby, put a little bit of little scrunchy stuff from the Dollar Tree and you have a cute little gift to give away. Um, so I, so far I have made two um, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to make your own. You're going to need a heavyweight piece of cardstock, 110 pound weight, um, that measures four and a half by, no, four by five and a half. And you're going to score at one inch on the right, one inch on the left, and on the bottom, you're going to score one inch and then at two inches. Um, so I already pre-scored it just to make the video a little bit faster. And at the very top, I don't know if you can see, but here I made a score line at one inch, only up to the score mark. And the same thing right here, from right here, I made the score, let me try to make sure I'm frame. I made the score mark right here up to this score line. So we're gonna be cutting those squares out. So once you have scored your paper, you need to make sure you fold on all the score marks and fold this way and fold this way now these two little squares up here you are going to cut out because i am going to use a tag punch to give the decorative top at the bottom now this is not necessary if you don't have one of these punches you can by all means leave it completely square at the top or flat or you can just simply just cut you know the corners like that to make a little um um i guess uh what you call it those uh, those typical like um, tags that you find at Hobby Lobby and whatnot. Now, what I'm doing is I'm cutting these two score marks right here. I'm cutting up to that score mark right there. 
and at the top let i hope you guys can see let me see make sure i'm in frame here it is kind of hard um right here i measured one inch and i made a little tick mark right here I don't know if you can see it right there if you can see it right there um and what that is is i'm going to cut from here to the edge just like that but before i do that i'm going to show you the punch that i actually purchased from hobby lobby and i'm just straightening these out this because i notice i kind of kind of crooked here okay so this is a punch that I got from Hobby Lobby. It is a three tag punch, one and a half inch, two inch, and two and a half inch. So this is two inches wide. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fold these in so that way it can fit right in there. And I'm just simply going to punch. And that gives me this little decorative topping. So now this little cord, this little tick mark I told you guys about, that I'm going to cut from that all the way to the corner and the same thing goes for right here i'm going to put right here all the way up to the corner so all that's left now is to mat and to build the box so before i mat i am going to actually build the box um for your mats let me go ahead and give you the measurements for your matting you are going to have two inches by three and a half and the two inch you're going to go ahead and use your punch again and you're going to cut that out you're going to need two pieces of two inches by three and a half and use your tab punch for that because that is what's going to mat this inner part and the back so if you want to go ahead and mat them before oh this is so pretty i'm going to use that for the back hmm. I think I might actually use that side. Um, before you go ahead and put your um, your box together, you can mat it and make it so much easier for you. So I'm just going to set that aside and line it up with my hole. Make sure that it's down here. And I'm going to go ahead and just burnish my edges again now this other side and blah, whoops there and match it up with my hole right there and mat it okay now this part right here is going to be the bottom and this is going to be the front. So this is what you're gonna need. You're gonna need a piece that measures one inch by two inches, but that's if you don't want a white border. I went ahead and I'm gonna want a little bit of a border. So I'm just gonna trim a little bit off the sides. So that way when I hear it down, you can still see a little bit of a border around. Now I need to straighten this edge right here because it's a little crooked. And put that right there. The other mats are going to be these two, which you're going to need a piece that measures one inch by, I think it's two and a quarter. Yeah, two and a quarter. But at the same time, you're going to go up one inch, and then from here, you're going to cut across. So of course you're gonna lay this down this way. And I'm gonna use this side just so that way they can match. And I'm gonna measure one inch from the bottom. Make a little tick mark. Let me see if I can have a, a pen or something. I guess not, I'll just use my scissors then. I'm gonna write a little tick mark right about there. And that means from here, there's a little tick mark right here. From here, I'm going to cut up. So that's going to be my mat right there. But of course I want it smaller. So I am going to trim a little. Now only reason why I don't cut it like I guess six eighths of an inch when I cut it the first time is just I hate cutting paper smaller than an inch on my paper trimmer. I really do. I always mess it up guys. So here on this matting part I usually tend to eyeball it 
uh, and again, this is optional if you want to mat it. If you don't, that's fine. And there you go. So I, I'm just eyeballing it here. Until I get it where I want it. And I would say a little bit more from here in the bottom. Now, of course, the easier way of doing this would probably be me using a ruler and, you know, measuring and stuff. But I don't know. I just didn't feel like doing it today. So that looks about good. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that down. And now I'm going to do the same thing over here. Go up about an inch. Now I'm going to cut from this way, so my tick mark has to be on this side. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and cut all the way that way. And trim a little bit off the edge. Oops, I went crooked there. And I'm sorry if I'm trying like to be a little on the quiet side because, like I said, it's late and my little my little bell decides to go to sleep super late because she wants to stay up with the big kids. So I tend to speak a little quieter when I record in the middle of the night. So. Oh my gosh, I cannot get that angle. I think that would do it. Almost. Almost, Garza. Okay, that's going to have to do. Now again, it's not going to be perfect. You don't even have to mat the corners or the sides. I just did because I just like the shabby feel. I'm going to think, I think I'm going to be going for the shabby look for the entire series. So again, now what we're going to do is form the box. So these two flaps are going to get glued. Now you can use hot glue for this if you're going to want to make several of these and go a little faster. That's completely fine. So you're going to fold that up and glue it there, fold that up and glue it there. And then this is gonna fold over this way, just like so. So then now these two squares are gonna get glue and you fold it up and hold it down a bit. And the side glue and fold it down and there is your little box now you can go ahead and decorate this to your heart's content I went ahead and just put a little sticker snowflake from the Dollar Tree and on this one I think I put whoop on this one I put a little lace on the bottom but this is pretty much the construction of this little box and now it fits a little hand sanitizer nice and perfect and it just stands just cute on somebody's office desk. So it's not like one of those things where you can just simply just leave it there or not. But I don't know. I think it's really, really adorable and cute to give away. I would personally keep this on my desk just to hold my hand sanitizer because I'm pretty sure I always lose things. But for the most part, I'm going to go ahead and put a white little butterfly from the Dollar Tree here. And I think it adds a very cute element. And then, of course, I'll go ahead and add some ribbon um later because i can't find my ribbon right now so but there you guys there you have it guys this is um pretty much how you create a little hand sanitizer holder gift box i guess you can call it with a little tag now if you wanted to you could stick some little tags in here or write two from in the back something simple as that um hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and um if you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Do not forget to to subscribe to everyone's channel. Please leave a comment because I love reading them. I do read every single one and I try to respond to everybody. Um, 
But thank you guys so much for watching and I can't wait to see you guys tomorrow. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.